Um, one thing I didn't want to note, oopsie daisy, I had the teams on the wrong side there. Last minute cast set up for the win. It turns out it does happen to uh, just about everybody at some point. Uh, but yes, we have Paralute on the left winning game one, Battlefield of Eternity, I-Cup on the right. As we head into game number two, it's going to be on Alterac Pass. And uh, yeah, hopefully the stream is going to hold up this time around and hopefully we are uh, good to go as we head into draft number two. And I think this time we got it right. Paralute's on the left. Oh, it's been that kind of week so far, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to lie to you. All right, so Sea West, Paralute up one nothing over I-Cup as we head into match number, or game number two for the match. Best of three series here in Division C West. So I'll have to see if I-Cup wants to make any adjustments from last game. That Hanzo was uh, kind of a problem. A lot of damage coming out as well from Toasty on the Gray Main, so that might be something to look at. We've seen Gray Main actually coming back steadily into the meta. So it's nice to see him back. And Icup gonna go ahead and go with the uh, gonna go ahead and go with the Abther ban. Kael'thas going to be banned out on the other side here for Paralute. So uh, still, Paralute's still not wanting to see that KT coming out from last game. Meanwhile, Taronda is going to be the ban out here. So uh, I do like that adjustment from iCup. Definitely that uh, Lunar Flare combo was pretty rough not and not necessarily something that you would only see on battlefield of eternity taronda definitely one of the strongest healers in the game at the moment so i, I do like that ban out um but anna is now going to be available but icup has first pick uh potential here so they can take the anna if paralute wants to deny it and the vala going to be banned out from paralute they do not want to see that combo coming out again so uh, is this first pick Ariel again for iCup? That's my question. Are the Cho'Gal shenanigans going to continue? Well, the Diablo actually going to be the first pick this time around. So they're going to go a little bit more meta <laughs> this game, I do believe. Which makes a lot of sense. Diablo, just a terror in general, but a Nubarak is going to be available for Paralute if they want it. But they're actually going to go to the Ariel on their own side here. Very interesting. And uh, Asmodan going to be the adjustment. Meanwhile, Hanzo switching to the other side. So uh, this time it's going to be Wafflecopter playing the Hanzo. Going to steal that away from uh, Argo Booster this time. Now, now the question then becomes, is this a Cho'Gall coming out from Paralu? <laughs> I mean, they're up one nothing, you know. Now, of course, every win does count here in the Nexus Gaming Series. If you do manage to get a 2-0 domination, you walk away with all three points. Basically, there are three points on the table, one for each win. Unless you dominate, then you just get all three if you win the Series 2-0, so... Um, so every game counts. There are no gimme matches at all in the regular season. There might be a gimme match here and there in the playoffs, but <laughs> but that's not really. That's also not really the time when you want to let your foot off the gas. So uh, and yeah, there's the Chogall ban. So I cup saying, ah, uh -uh, we know that strategy. <laughs> we we don't want to see that coming out. And so now the question is, how does Paralute follow this? Now of course Asmodan not the worst hope generator in the world but it's it's he's very he's got a lot of spike damage so it's not good for sustained healing so we're probably going to want to see something a little bit more sustained damage e and there it is the Li Ming. Uh, she does good burst damage but she also has very low cooldowns on her abilities so it makes her a pretty ideal hope target um 
Ariel, of course, better now at generating hope than she used to be. Um, I like generating her own hope. But, uh, you know, still you want that good hope generator. And Li Ming makes for an excellent battery. Meanwhile, on the other side, Sonia Diablo already set up as the front line. So support and solo yeah. coming out yeah. here. Imperius also going to be picked up. So holy front line Batman iCup has just got a massive massive wall to uh, enable waffle copter to just constantly poke and uh, malfurion as well with the heels he should be able to step up and get those moon fires out to really be able to sustain the members of i cup i love this kind of uh this kind of defensive strategy from well it, it can be aggressive but mostly it's going to be really good at defending any sort of dive or uh potential to get on their back line Meanwhile, Johanna's going to come out on the other side. Uh, good combination with Asmodan can help him stacking quite a bit. But uh, we'll see. You know, we've seen Asmodan kind of falling off a little bit, but uh, still pretty powerful overall. He's not somebody I would want to mess with. That's for sure. All right, so game number two coming up here in this NGS match. Now, of course, Alterac Pass, um, definitely definitely a little different uh, from Battlefield of Eternity. But as far as map objectives go, uh, they're about as similar as you can get to a Battlefield of Eternity. You basically spend the entire time fighting out of lane over the objectives. Once you cap it, you get a pushing uh, map, map objective mechanic. So... Um, you know, not completely different. Don't, don't quite need the uh, PvE burn potential, but either way, on the left, we are going to see Paralute. Karthin going to be playing the Artanis. Argo Booster going to be on the Li Ming. Hello going to be playing uh, the Ariel. Toasty going to be on Asmodan. And Swill is going to be playing the Johanna. Meanwhile, on the right, we've got Icup. Magnite going to be playing that uh, Sonya. We're going to see Logic playing the Malfurion. Arc Valley going to be on Diablo. Waffle Copter playing the Hanzo. And we're going to have a Delta playing the Imperius. Meanwhile, right away, the members of iCup going to split out the lane. But uh, Logic going to get swapped in. Root to try and zone. And uh, good, good uh, heal and Moonfires to uh, keep himself alive there. Nice zoning as well from Arc Valley with the heals. Wafflecopter actually gets uh, whipped into the wall there. Hello. And utilizing that awkward mid lane that we have here on Alterac Pass to get a little cheeky stun out early. But for right now, both members going to end up, both teams going to end up walking away. 18 stacks here early in these first couple of globes for Paralute. Meanwhile, massive globe coming in there, or orb, I should say, from uh, Argo Booster. We're having, all, we got all the circles this game. We got globes, we got orbs, uh, potentially, you know, the blinding circle. Heck, maybe just for fun, Swill will go with uh, with that other old, not uh, Blessed Shield, but uh, whatever that other one is, nobody really knows what it is. But it's a circle. <laughs> Uh, Delta pressing into the bot lane may have a little bit of an advantage here. Uh, the wave clear is going to be a little bit rough early, but uh, definitely has some percentage based damage to throw the way of Carthen here. Meanwhile, again, uh, Icup going to rotate here and get on the camp game nice and early. I like that call. Meanwhile, Swill goes to the bot lane while they rotate out Delta to get the camp again. That amateur opponent is going to serve him very well here in that endeavor. Meanwhile, Hello going to go up to the top lane, try and help uh, Argo Booster. It does have the natural disadvantage here with uh, the Sonya in the solo lane on the other side. And I, I, I kind of like this 
this idea of double solo laners here from iCup. There's definitely a double solo lane map, but Delta getting very low here. Swill's actually got a shot to take him out and will. Imperius falling, not respecting Johanna's battle ability here. And that's first blood going over to the side of Paraloot in a most unexpected fashion, I will say. So uh, 50 stacks so far for Toasty. Not a bad start. Uh, especially on a map like this where it's not very rotation based. You know, you can't really rotate between these massive lanes. Toasty can probably get in range to throw globes to uh, other lanes to try and get a little bit extra clear, but most of it's honestly just going to come from right here. This map objective, throwing your globe at, at, uh, at heroes and getting those bonus stacks. Not to mention the, uh, the, the stacks coming in from this level 1 wrath. The, uh, the basics, so that'll help. Meanwhile, up in top lane, Argo Booster struggling a little bit on the wave clear department, but Sonya rotating down, gonna finally allow uh, allow her to come on up. Waffle Copter still soaking, and the objective was channeled by Paralude, so they're gonna get a little bit of an early advantage. Hello, taking a little bit of damage on the backside, will drop that heal though with maximum hope. Delta taking some damage on the other side. Arc Valley going to come in, trying to zone. Going to actually try to take out uh, Johanna there out of the fight, but uh, Iron Skin popped and Swill gets right back into the thick of things for the moment. Pokes back and forth they go. Toasty completely out of mana on the backside, though. Only had enough for one last globe, and now is just completely bone dry on the mana. And it looks like for right now, Paralu going to have to back up, but Waffle Cops are taking a bunch of damage. Be very, very low. He's going to have to hit the tap button. And Delta is in a very, very precarious situation here. And there's the globe. The globe's going to do it. Toasty able to finish him off there. Maybe a little bit of an aggressive position in that bush. Didn't want to give up the bush party position. And now Swill's going to end up capping. And uh, now just 12 seconds away from the objective. A couple members are here, but the defense is still good. In from Paraloo try and keep them out of here. Waffle Copter looking for the cheeky kill on the other end, but that's going to be enough. The generals are going to end up coming out here for the members of Ica, or for the members of Paralute, I should say. Meanwhile, uh, still picking fights here. This is not over yet. Artanis, uh, that's not an escape, unfortunately, and oh boy. Ariel not able to turn the corner. And that's a pretty big team fight win for iCup. You know, I was, I was about to get on him there for staying in too long, but it, it, as a matter of fact, you know, getting those kills as the generals were coming out is pretty big. It's going to really stifle Paralute's ability to get maximum value out of this map objective. They're going to get good value in the bot where they're pushing, but in mid, it's going to get cleared completely for free. Sunny's got good clear on the top. Uh, with the wave clear that she has, so this uh, this four will take some damage, but uh, this could have been a lot worse for the members of Icup for sure. They're only going to lose this bottom four, and then just front walls and fort damage in the top. Meanwhile, uh, good XP equaler as well as they were out in every lane soaking during this map objective. And those generals, they take a while to come out, so you can afford to have a little bit of time uh, soaking and trying to get a, a, an advantage in terms of uh, taking, in terms of trying to get some takedowns. And while we will see camp picked up for the side of Paraloop, nice and early. And these mid camps are just—they seem like they're just up all the time now. Battle Rage is on up in the top lane between the solo lane. Currently 112 on the count here for Asmodan and increasing uh, all the time here. Delta warding. Gonna look to maybe try and catch somebody out here. We'll hit the spear onto Toasty, but a nice whip to zone. 
an arrow not gonna find its mark from Waffle Copter. Speaking of uh, arrow, we've got level 10s coming in. Oh, Logic taking a ton of damage from that globe, but it is gonna be the uh, the arrow along with Wrath of the Berserker, uh, Twilight's Dream, um, and this one, and it's actually gonna be Wrath of Anguirus. So they're looking to get some isolated kills there and the Lightning Breath for Icup. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's gonna be Wave of Force, Blessed Shield, Suppression Pulse, Black Pool, and Crystal Aegis. So very standard picks over on the side of Paralu. Meanwhile, Camp gonna be grabbed for Icup and Mag Knight actually uh, being very aggressive on the end gauge. Swap is good and that is gonna be a massive pickoff here. Reset also now uh, for the members of Paralute. So not only not only do they have good positioning here to start this off, but now they're man up and Logic eating the swap as well, trying to make it out. Depression pull is gonna come in and they're going in deep to try and get him. Have they gone too far? Uh, the whip comes out. Aegis actually might put Par Carthen in more trouble. Lightning breath comes out, so they're gonna be slowed on the retreat but they do make it out. And that's a lot of heroics down on both sides. And in come the members of iCup. They're looking to try and force the issue here before this map objective is grabbed and they will stop it with just over six seconds left. And now they're gonna look to force on the backside, but uh, logic's pretty low here. Gonna have to be careful. These members of Paralude have kited all the way back to their side. And they've got pretty good poke and denial for this as well. So I don't see a world where Icup's gonna be able to get this without some picks. Charging onto Asmodan, Toasty taking the brunt of that, but it's actually uh, Anguirus that comes out onto Artanis. He's taking a ton of damage, but he will kite away for the moment. And he looks like he's gonna be okay. Delta gonna eat that globe on the backside getting them a little bit low, and they are able to zone. I didn't think they'd be able to get it without the kills, but they are able to zone it out, and Delta again eating so much damage from that globe, and there it is. The uh, denial cap started. They're not gonna be able to interrupt all of these, or are they? Waffle Copter's trying, and they do end up stopping the cap. So back we go to the, uh, to the dance of Alterac Pass. Hello, taking that charge, but a whip on the other side, gonna zone for himself a little bit there. Big lightning breath coming out though. Gonna take out one, force out the Aegis onto another. Asmodan's gonna go down. And just like that, it's a three nothing exchange. Hello, trying to make it out. Waffle Copter looking for it. Will get the pick off from deep downtown there. Big Q coming in from Waffle Copter and they will be able to cap this. And it looks like there's not a whole lot that Ang that uh, Argo can do. I do respect the attempt at poking from over the wall there, but at the end of the day, that's gonna be the cap. And I, I don't know that Paralute's gonna have enough time to try and bring this back from the brink. Magnite pushing in the top lane, gonna end up rotating down and they've got all their members here. Can they look to try and interrupt this? Carthen on the cap, but huge spear coming in, and that's gonna be enough. Uh, and actually, Imperius does end up falling on the backside, but uh, Toasty gonna fall in response, so a one for one, and now the brawl as <laughs> they go back and forth. Uh, Arrow comes in, four member stun. Arc Valley gonna be able to toss in, but the Aegis in response. Garthin getting pretty low here. Waffle Copter low on the other side though, so both sides are in a little bit of danger. And that is gonna be it for Johanna. They do end up getting one more kill. So again, Icup taking advantage of the, uh, the long timers of these map objectives. First time it was for defense. This time it's for, uh, for the offensive ability. Now they're gonna have more push pressure. All five are up here in top lane with this general, so they're gonna look to push for keep here with Johanna off the map. And they might be able to get it at this rate. Keeps even more important on this map than on others because of the armor mechanic on the core. 
Arc Valley looking to try and isolate somebody. Big root coming in from Logic, but no follow up there. Swill is back as they look to try and push in this keep, but uh, there might be a little bit of over aggression here. The general is down, and the counter engage is is totally possible. We do see the Angris coming out onto Johanna, but it's Artanis that ends up falling first. Spear to follow it up with a lightning breath, though. Hello's going to end up going down as well, so it's a three for nothing. <clears throat> and Icup is going to have to back up for now. But it's just a massive pickoff there. Turns into three kills. And now it's Icup looking to try and take game number two. Force this to a game three. Oh, but Sonya ends up going down. Heartbreak. Heartbreaking for the members of Icup right now. They're taking so much damage from this thing. Oh no, the stun on the Waffle Copter. Oh, they are going to end up taking this thing down, but uh... Yeah, as my as my good buddy Myrtle likes to say, you yeah, hate to see it. Level 16 is going to come in. Level 16 is about half a level away now for Paralute, so a little bit of a lead here for Icup. And uh, they've got the boss marching in. This thing doesn't do a whole lot by itself. Look at, like, minimal damage onto the keep. Probably probably get the front wall down, and that's more or less about it. Like that, like, like that, uh, that AoE hit didn't get anything. Like, I, don't, I don't even know what that was meant to achieve. And again, like, where's that hit going? Come on, man. Golem. Help me out here, bro. I will say this much. At least the mid camps. At least they know how to go hit structures. I'm just saying. Next map objective is coming up here in the bot half of the map. And it looks like we have a uh, uh, DC on Imperius. Um, but we'll let, the, we'll let the teams hammer out whether or not they want to pause here. We are going to see Li Ming going down here. As uh, the members of ICUP, they don't really care about the DC. They are just going in ham. Imperius actually going to hit the spear. Uh, MVP bot Imperius. <laughs> with a follow-up. Arc Valley getting very low. Toasty is going to go down. And uh, Icup, maybe it was planned. I don't know. Who knows? They say that the bots are the best at hitting skill shots. I'm just saying. So bot Imperius and the rest of Icup rotating to the objective. Wafflecopter, meanwhile, along with Logic, just kind of beating down the door here. And there, and there comes Delta coming back. I like the no I like the no pause. They're like, it's fine. We're good. <laughs> oh. oh man, it's it's working out for him. Meanwhile, the invade coming on the camp. They spot Paralude out here. And hello. Goodbye. It's gonna be a big camp steal as well. Again, these this these mid these the, this mid camp, it has to be responded to. These things do so much shred. Uh, with that with that armor shred on the structures. And Delta is now back. Welcome back, Delta. It's good to have you back, but, you know, the AI guy was doing just fine. Gotta give him a lot of credit, too. And that's gonna be uh, second, uh, the third map objective of the game going over to iCup. Second that they've gotten here. And Toasty is uh, not long for this world. Gonna go down and give... Uh, Arc Valley, the completion on that uh, on that quest talent from 13 as well. So this is a scary moment for Paraloop. They're looking at the potential for multiple keep losses here. That's what I'm saying, Delta. They didn't even miss you. I believe it, man. I, I'm telling you, the the bot was doing work. You'll see it in the replay later. Meanwhile, we are going to see uh, full five-man commitment to the bot. Uh, Li, uh, Li Ming and, and, and was in the mid to start, but now actually gets hit by the Angris. And uh, in come the members of Icup. They're going to blow him to smithereens here. 
Carthen having to back up, and this keep is totally going down. Stun only found onto Swill there, but in comes the Lightning Breath. Gonna at least zone the members back. And now Paralute finding the kill on Johanna, and they're gonna be looking at trying to take down the core now. Of course, uh, the core, uh, a little bit more threatening here on Alterac than it is on most maps, but when you got three members down, I think they're good to go here. They've got it down to about 50% health at this point, and falling, and it's just a massive, uh, massive uh, stun there by Delta. Spearing to keep them zoned, and uh, it looks like that is going to be it. Right as the globe comes in to maybe get a couple of kills, but, uh, and, and the respawn was coming in for Li Ming as well, but Paralute not quite able to be up in time, and Icup going to take game number two and force us into game three here in this best of three series. All right. And uh, this, is, this is the world I'm living in right now. Just a bunch of zeros. I even, I even uh, reinstalled HOTS and it's still, uh, it's still just saying no. You don't get end of game stats when you're observing. But uh, either way, I'm going to take a quick break while we set up for game number three. Don't you guys go anywhere. We'll be right back with the conclusion to the C West best of three matchup, Paralute versus Icup. Coming at you in just a moment. We are back and set up for game number three. These guys are pros. They are on it. Everybody's in lobby. Just gotta get the uh, just gotta get the mode set up and ready to go. And we're gonna go to Infernal Shrines for game number three. Where else you would want to end a series that's gone like this so far? We'll go back to the world of Diablo. For a little bit more fun. We'll bring some Punishers to the party as well. That's of course a map that uh, you see Wave Clear very heavily prioritized. It's important to be able to team fight too though. You get a lot of team fights over the map objective here. No matter how much Wave Clear you have, it's very hard to simply outpower the opponent with that here unless they're just sorely lacking in wave clear and most teams know to prioritize it here as well so that's a pretty rare occurrence
All right. Looks like we are getting everything set up. Now it looks like this was a map pick for the side of iCup. So, Paralute uh, electing to get first pick here. Got to make sure both teams are ready to go. All right, so we got the R's coming in from both squads now. We'll be taking this into game number three. Now, of course, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I'll be very interested to see if uh, we see the adjustments uh, from from the band scenarios. We've seen Hanzo be uh, very well played by both squads in games one and two. Kind of the common denominator. Also, Ariel uh, now 0 and 2 in the series. So I have to see if either team wants to go back to uh, Ariel, especially in a world without the guaranteed Chogall. I, well, I don't know. I don't know what world we're living in. That's uh, that Chogall is our main point of contestion. <laughs> but uh, either way. Diablo just uh, a force that last game for iCup. Arc Valley just putting people into the walls. I thought for a second there he might be putting people through walls. All right. I, I do think this is pretty much anybody's game, though. These two teams seem fairly evenly match, matched. We've seen, you know, both team, both games. We've seen team fights going back and forth. A lot of it's come down to macro. And uh, the late game team fights, which are ever so important nowadays in Heroes of the Storm post uh, XP changes. And in we go for game number three. First pick, first ban. Going to be going over to uh, Paralute. So let's see if they want to adjust anything. You know, they they didn't uh, they didn't prioritize. Uh, the Diablo ban, they, they let that slip through. Icup uh, scooped that up last draft. This time they are in the dominant position here for that first pick. Icup gonna elect to ban out the Zeratul. It's very good on this map. There's a lot of chokes that uh, the enemy team has to run through to be able to get in or out of these objective points. So it's kind of hard to prevent your team from clumping. Which is a big problem when Zeratul is on the other side. So I like that ban out. Kalthos just kind of a perma ban here from Paralute in this uh, in this matchup. And uh, I like... <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Chogol. Uh, this is a thing between these two teams. I'm just going to take it out nice and early. You're going to guarantee and then I don't got to worry about it. Now it's an interesting it's an interesting decision from Paralute there though, because if if they do 
pick Ariel in the one two, then you can ban Chogall in the third ban. And if they pick Chogall in the one two, you can you know you can maybe like pick Alex Straza and then ban out Ariel, and then there's no good Every healing until like. Uh, and I mean Lucio's banned out permanently right now from NGS, so there's like no other good healers. But uh, you do see uh, Argo making sure to get the Hanzo nice and early. They didn't want to give Wafflecopter another shot at taking that hero. I love that call. Does leave Anubarak, Johanna, a lot of good tanks available. Uh, but the Genji going to come out, so <laughs> we're going to see Wafflecopter saying, Oh, you're going to go ahead and steal my Shimada? Well, I will... I will uh, see you on the battlefield with another Shimada. Genji's taking a little bit of a hit in the meta, though. Not to say that he can't be good. Uh, definitely can be effective, but uh, his nerfs definitely did not help his cause here in the Nexus. Leoric and Alex Draws are going to be picked up now for Paraloot, so... Um, they are going to start to move away from the Ariel this game. And uh, Alex Raz is so good on this map with these early Dragon Queens. And just the ability to pop that during such a massive moment, uh, such as the Shrine fights. Um, it's just such, you know, the extra wave clear is great, but really, you know, it's the burst healing and the zoning. It just uh, it really, really makes a big difference on this map. Uh, definitely this one and Volskaya Foundry, her two best maps. Meanwhile, Leo, a good counter to Sonya um, in the solo lane. I don't expect Leoric to win that super hard, but still a nice, uh, a nice counter pick there coming in for Carthen. Malfurion and Anubarak going to be banned out here on the turn of the draft. So, uh, I kept clearly having a different tank in mind, which I'm sure they'll pick here before Paraloot gets their pick of the litter. Maybe a Johanna, uh, could be, uh, ooh, an Arthas coming out. Now, I like that call, especially with the Greymane. You know, we saw Toasty play a very good Greymane. It does leave up the potential for Asmodee and Johanna, but I don't know if they're going to go back to that. Uh, on the side of Paraloot. I guess we shall see. But um, they're going to go instead to the Junkrat. And they're going to go ETC. So uh, ETC is definitely also falling out of the meta. But what I was saying was I like the Arthas pickup right there for Delta. Because uh, with the Greymane, uh, Arthas is a huge counter to Greymane. So it's going to deny that pick right out the gate. You definitely like picking those two together. And then just leaves the healer for Icup. They'll take Stukov. And uh, so, so that Stukov, a couple of good interrupts for Mosh Pit and his kit. Uh, of course, there's the desync back again. All right, let me, let me start over the stream real quick. And I'll see if I can get this uh, resynced. 